All right, we see another center trade for Varus. It's been pretty cursed. If there's a way for G2 to lose, it would certainly be this. Look at this team composition, heavily indexed on, on ability power here. Uh, no real tanks. I mean, Rel, Rel will have enough economy coming out of the jungle, but between the Mav Malmordius for this Jace, this is pre-buff Jace, by the way, but Mav Malmordius on this Jace, and presumably, I don't know if it's going to be Abyssal Mask, Kanic Rookern on, on Rel, are they going to be able to just front line against this against this mag this magic damage buffet right here right like and specifically you've got azir lilia and gragas makes itemization for the solo lanes very very easy now this is less exploitable than it used to be because people can't just go double mr rune to play for a, a nearly invincible early start all right we have been seeing the Senelanes getting the priority early against the Varus. Uh, slightly stronger. They have a little bit more residual fight at level 1. Varus wants to get that combo out. <clears throat> and really at level 3 is when he starts taking it over. Because Senna has a blank spell for combat. Senna should be able to move forward. We do see a contestation for this though. I'd like to see the bottom. I mean, getting a little bit of a... Gragas versus Jace showdown. Here, but I really want to see what's happening with the bot lane private. It looks like they actually so Varus Alistar actually wrestled res, uh, rested it away. Now this is something we we haven't seen much of, but Alistar's stats right now are strong enough to just get the a pulverize and flash on top of your enemies and just use those stats to just take a fight early. Now the rest of the fight goes poorly, right? You can't do anything else. There's nothing left for you to do, and the whole time presumably Senna is dealing max damage to you. And you don't want to get her those free stacks because it changes her ability to get back in the game. Now, here we have a slight deviation where Yike went for a, a ribbon clear, which is uh, where you go Raptors, Wolves, Gromp into blue, and you start for the reverse clear. This is a very popular path, especially when you're blue team, to try to get to the Void Mites at level 5. Hold on, they're going for a dive here. Oh, they can actually take the maximum. That's Aftershock means he stays alive. The fact that they don't get this kill is actually huge for them. Also, Yike was able to outsmite on blue, so Bad Lions might be feeling, oh, nice little answer there. You're getting hooked, and instead of allowing the hook to go, you say, no, I'm going to pulverize you, and we're going to go for this play. You're locked in your animation. Beautiful answer by Alvaro. So now Varus can look for a little quick reset. Alstar's going to try to go out to help to push, but also doesn't want to give Senna any free stacks early so you just want to come out here and mash this wave as much as possible threaten headbutt every time that senna looks like she might step forward you can actually step up yourself gragas has nothing left good little trade back there from jace Ooh, caught up with a one misclick moves forward at a time where he shouldn't means that gragas is actually going to feel pretty strong here he's taking the rest of this fight forward and this we got problems here this is flash auto range merwin is forced to flash I don't know if that was a missed click or what it was or thinking, but he actually stepped forward while he was changing to range form. Perhaps the range cooldown wasn't back up, but I don't think that was the case, but ends up stepping up in back into the range of the Gragas and Broken Blade props to him for seeing it, recognizing the mistake and stepping up right away to punish that to the maximum means you get the flash. And this, this matchup where you're supposed to end up hemorrhaging a little bit early and then using your cooldowns to try to sustain your way back up ends up getting a tremendous lead. Now he'll kill, kill this next wave. He gets the proxy off, which means he's gonna get a fast clear. Doesn't go for the plate. Now Jace might consider trying to leave this, but it's too early in the game. Uh, it's not actually gonna be enough. So expect him to go burst this. We're gonna see like Q triple auto and uh into to the skies <clears throat> good little answer again there from alistar realizing all right you know i'm going to get rooted that's fine i can use this animation time to knock you up and i will be rooted in the time that i'm right next to you either i'm traveling or i'm already there and you're knocked up so i'm going to keep hitting so your root root is effectively wasted uh good job with the punish there getting the maximum out like to see this uh this guy is playing out of his mind right now. Can they continue it? Ooh, Mickey steps forward, trying to punish this Hex Flash. Takes a step back. Oh no, waits for the emote. Catches him in the emote. 
pulls up. They're baiting. Who's baiting who? Rel's coming in. But we see Hansama getting to unload, but it's not enough. Varus is always going to win this damage trade. Level 4 especially. Hansama gets a few, a few, a few extra stacks, but uh, this is how you would play against Mickey. Try constantly bait to see if you can get him a little bit too far. See if, if you can get the wild side to take over and be stronger on the collapse, which is what they are this time. I'm going to give Alvaro the, the credit here that he did this on purpose. So <clears throat> this is after this hex flash forward that could have been listed as a mistake, but always arriving to the fight second means that it's going to be easier to get your abilities. We see knock up uh, the Alistar stun, making it very easy for Rel to hit double. And Supa getting just enough mana to get that kill on the far side. So I love it. One point three k gold lead. Can they turn this into more? How are they going to try to stretch it? They have a decent siege and decent poke comp with Jace, Varus, and and Talia. So the cloud for the extra rotations could help them a little bit. And specifically, the void grubs are going to be very important for them in general uh, because you want to get into these sieging situations. You want to get into these pushing situations. I don't like that they're actually putting Rel Alistar down here. Uh, they are saying, let's try to dogpile onto the Senna, but playing weak side with this Jace, Jace is not going to be effective, especially after that early loss to the Gragas. This matchup where you're supposed to be able to jump jump ahead for a bit, and the only thing that you really have to worry about is not having your two this guys belly bopped out of the air. Uh, he ends up giving so much on this side. Now, they do get a kill back, but it is on Nautilus. It's not on Senna. She drops all the way back. She's saying, are you, are you willing to stay down here again? I'm just going to hide in this bush for a bit. Let you guys spend all your resources up here while Lilia goes for a full counter jungle. We kill the Jace. We proxy a wave. Wave is dying under his turret again. And we're going to have inside tra track on the Void Grubs. Now, not super important for them themselves that they get it, but they absolutely do not want to give six. So expect Lily Lilia to try to poke one Void Mount out of both of these spawns but not prioritizing it at all right now unless i just didn't see that she already caught one if she already caught one it would still show up on the map and we wouldn't have a visual for it because the observers are not tagging the void might spawns as far as i know but we'll we'll keep an eye on this see the spawn we see the spawn for a moment but look at this awful wave situation this lane is frozen out against you Versus a champion that from this point out can't, completely counters you. And like, how do you ever approach this wave? Big flex. And Gragas, Gragas is going to get all this back because he's got, he's got the Catalyst of Eons. Now, Jace, if that trade were able to get the wave under turret, it would be worth. But it's not. It's going to sit here. Gragas also has the tools. That big fat belly bob that he does can knock these guys out of the uh, turret range and he can preserve his freeze and now Jace is bamboozled. What, what is he supposed to do? Basically, he needs to come over and just try to help make a, a play on mid, help crash in a wave a little bit faster than they might expect and make a rotation over to the grubs. But teleport, yeah, teleporting top here is a, is a blunder. This is just making things worse. Like what do you, what do you do here? You you got a minimal shop off against a champion that's already in a position to counter you up two levels, can take everything you do, completely ignore you, and still win. He's trying super hard to get this thing in, but like conversely, they could have taken this and turned it into grubs, try to get into their play for their comp. They're a poke comp. Every team that's poke would love to have void grubs. Every team that's team fight would like to have void grubs significantly more than dragon right i understand that they want to play around bot and they want to try to punish the senna but if they are not able to get this kill then she's just going to be fine not only fine she's actually just going to be winning this trade now flashes out gets out of the bounce house and is able to get a full impact ultimate off and you see the effect here this rod of ages isn't even stacked guys this is only going to get worse here mickey inting for hansama 
But buying five seconds for Han Sama, legit strategy, by the way. You die so that they don't have to. Sometimes you also don't need to die, which is where Mickey gets uh gets some flack. But look how strong the rest of the team is, right? On Sama playing aptly safely. It's saying, okay, you can't do anything. We are winning by so much on the top lane that as long as I don't lose by that same amount or more in bot lane, we're good, right? You can take it. We're fine in mid. Lilia's going to have access. It looks like we're finally going to get a void grub. Now that we can't get six voids, uh, they're just going to go and tap one. Maybe she doesn't even do it. She, I expect her to do it. Should just be a one. This is going to be a single, single isolated damage. Under one void, might, I expect. In fact, coming over says we've got to pick on the Frost Gowie. We've got the E into the no R. Good enough. Jace trying his damnedest to get out of this situation, but every spell that Gragas casts is eternal, right? So he's gaining more health. Plus, the Rod of Ages is stacking, plus he's got his passive. So he is just at this like nigh invincible state without even buying an armor item. And then once he gets what I assume is going to be Cosmic Drive to make sure that he's the most mobile in these fights uh, and having the most cooldown. Oh, they got... No, they didn't get hit by the tap of that, but that's enough. Lily has got the rest. They try to force this out through the Gragas. I don't... I don't like it at all. I don't like the way that they're going about this game. They're trying to dogpile on the Senna. Good answers by Senna. They're using the minimal amounts of resources. They're just using Nautilus. Nautilus has died four times so that Senna didn't need to. And that is enough because they're taking that much more on the other side. It's not always in kills, right? But they're getting more and more and more. This is becoming an increasingly big problem for Mad Lions. And the fact that Senna has not dropped a stack yet means that... You're going that she is going to be much stronger going into this middle game than the Senna's in the previous three games. All right, we see the early Merc Treads as an answer for the Rel Varus Talia combination, right? We have a couple stuns in those spots, roots and stuns. So Merc Treads makes complete sense. Just survive in the mid lane, play inside out, get that pressure. They're going to start rotating over. 13 minutes, gone into the game. You have first items completed. This is the window that you're always seeing Senna rotate to mid lane. She is too much of a liability at this point, right? Level 9 champions, 5 points in their main damaging spell, plus their ultimates, plus they've got completed items. This is the moment that you are weakest as an AD carry, right? You're level 8 in this case because of some uh, significant alone time in the lane. Um, could be nine like the Varus is, but still under-leveled compared to the solos. And so you need to you need that protection of mid lane. Much safer situation, right? They they did make these changes to the lanes with the idea being that the lane would be safer in general. It's much more open space, meaning that it's harder for people to collapse on you, easier for you to run away. Uh, that is exactly the type of situation that that Sen is looking for. Uh, Jace is just so weak that even with a counter item in the Hex Drinker, he is still going to die to the Sazir. Was that full, full gold value? I'm surprised that Jace is actually at full gold value based on how weak everything is going. All right, they do get the Rift Herald. This ward, by the way, um, I, I'm not going to call it lazy, but it doesn't see the exact opposite side. Now, it's not always important to see the exact opposite side of the bush, but the new width of this lane, a ward hugging one side or one side does not actually see the other corner. And, and you can actually create windows where you can put vision down that they don't know about. It's not always the most useful because if you're putting it down, it's also not seeing theirs necessarily. Uh, but it can create some windows where you can rotate through that area. Right now, they opt to use a control ward in that bush to turn it off. But when it's pushed that far back, you can actually rotate through that bush and create potential game-breaking uh, ambushes because the enemy team has no idea that you're there, 
right? They think they know. And that's the most dangerous kind of knowledge is false positives, right? I, I know that they're not there, right? I know it. So why would I ever think about what comes next in case they are there? You're just, you can catch someone completely un, unprepared and unaware. So what I would like to see them do is use this Herald proactively, rotate around the map, turn Jace into the same role that Senna was just playing, which is back off, die if needed, to lose the minimum, get some waves, step back, don't lose anything else, right? You see how, how comfortably back he was playing. <clears throat> Lily is actually rapping on him, though, saying, like, we're going to take it to you. And this is with Ma. This is through Ma of Malmordius. They're still able to get that huge chunk of damage. Gragas on the flip side, just never going to die here. A good macro here by G2. They get a pick here. Senna spending more alone time is going to continue stacking up. We're going to start seeing second lethality item, probably opportunity, and then the uh, boots as well. Southern Quadrant belongs to G2. Nothing for them to get here. I don't like that Mad Lines is even posturing in this position at all. They should be going straight out to mid, playing inside out, skip over this vision. Maybe they're they're trying to check on red buff that they don't know, although they can assume that it's been stolen. I don't think that they had perfect information that it's gone. So they end up coming by. Alistar wants to remove all the vision. But again, like what, what's it actually accomplishing? That vision was put there in a time where they were sieging after Jace. Yes, you can get something back by overtaking it and preparing for dragon. Make sure that there's nothing behind you, especially with double teleports available, especially when it's someone scary like Gragas or Azir that can uh, knock your knock someone important into the middle of a fight. So I understand why they want to do it, but most likely you're talking about those those wards going to be elapsing anyways. Uh, might as well just skip ahead and get your own vision line forward and say, we're going to play forward. If you teleport behind us, we will play through you because this is, after all, the portion of the map that we were strong. We did get this turret down early. We can get these wards down. I like the position that they have right now. This. I don't know what caused that, but now we're trying to catch up to the rest of the fight here. Supa is off alone. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Rag is feeling really strong. Oh, beautiful engage there. But, oh, the clicks are wrong. Rel goes forward as Talia goes backwards. A miscommunication with the team spells doom for them. That would have been a perfect engage if they could have gotten uh, their wombo damage out. But instead, they could not. Is that, is that Caps' dad? I feel, I feel like it is. What would you do here? Secret, secret call out. Hashtag strat chat. You can put 2537 in the comms. What would you do here if you're Mad Lions? You're down significantly. Uh, your back is against the wall, and this is for the championship. There is no next game. You have to win. Now, if I know what you're doing as a coach. As a coach, you're assuming there's game five. You don't spend any time caring about the result of this game because there is only one result that matters. If it's a loss, it's a loss, and it's done. You should only be spending time thinking about what game five looks like. What are the adjustments that we can make? It's, it should be nothing about cheering your team on right now it should be everything about what is working what could be working for the next game how can we approach this next one so we can have some semblance of success uh after these three games have i mean this game had some windows although again like this whole pressure of trying to play around senna versus playing through the jace that needs to try to snowball that matchup they end up putting all their eggs into one basket han someone just backs off and there's nothing left so will they adjust it for game five if there is a game five I like that Talia is using the knockback, pulling the cannon into the turret range. It's the only way that you can combat against it. Any champion with the hook is looking to do that. 
Nikki X pressing forward, willing to take damage for his team. Look at how he steps up. It forces everyone else back. All right, so if you're stepping back and you're not actually fighting there, you have to let this go. You have to let everything come back. Don't even fight this. Accept that as a pick. Say that that's an Azir cooldown. No. All right, they're trying for a fallout, a follow-up, and they look at all this damage, trying to come up, but they're down in levels, right? Their whole team just, it feels like they deal no damage. It felt like everything came out, and they only dealt 40% of the damage on uh, G2 side. So uh, just going to get walked over right here. Broken Blade having a, a hell of a series. This guy played great uh, did get a little bit gapped by Yasuo, but also had his moments on the Akali, right? So it's not even like his his game where the enemy player was strongest. It's not even like he was that bad. Alberto looks dejected. He looks like he's going through the motions. It's just like, huh, I'll look at the minimap now. I don't know. It, it just looks so slow compared to like that active anxiety that you want. So right here, after this scoop up, you just have to let the scoop happen. Supa, again, stepping too far forward, needs to be willing to let lo to loose the arrow and, uh, and to just get himself into safety. Can't put yourself that far forward. It's kind of been this, the s narrative of the series. Constantly in risk's way. Now, you know, you have to be on that edge. You have to be dancing that line. Was that a bug? Did, was that just a spectator thing? It looked like Caps just like blinked. Just boom, boom. Uh, you have to be dancing that line of dealing damage versus not taking damage. But we've seen that constantly in these games, we've just got too much, too much. And especially this game. Mo overall, like if you're down 0-4, then it's more okay for you to die. If, if someone else is getting something, it's okay for you to die as long as they're putting the pressure on you and you're trying to transition it into a lead for, for your team. This game... You've got 290 CS and your four items. This cannot be the game that you die, right? And it looks like he's trying to get that max max Q off. I don't know why he's trying to do it from further forward. It doesn't make any sense, actually. So, Supa, if you're watching, keep your head high. You're a good player. You can do this. You can do this, right? We need Supa. We don't need Super Supa. Play, play within yourself. Keep your head high. I'm talking like it's over. I assume it's over from here. Uh, we're talking about 6k with a broken inhibitor. We're going to start seeing pushes in mid and top into the dragon. But uh, if you're if you're super in this game, hold your head high. It's your first run, okay? You guys did great to get here. It was a hell of a ride. You played some awesome series to get this far. Elioya should be pumped. Don't get too, Don't get too down on your teammates, right? You've been here before. They haven't. Help to lift them up. Show them what it's like to lose gracefully and, and learn, right? You have, you have winners and you have learners. And in this case, the, the worst thing you can do is kind of panic and overreact to the spot where you make rash decisions and you don't actually learn. Take your team. You feel good. We got this far. We're in a good spot. Our team is good. We can do a lot of good things together. Let's build on it. Split champs for what, like the 17th time? Well done.